My name is Julie Kimpton, I'm the Senior Professional Markets Manager at Nikon Australia and in this session we'll be chatting about Nikon's latest product launch, the next chapter of the Z6 II and the Z7 II. Our panellists are some of the first photographers in Australia to test out these cameras and now you will get to hear their first impressions and learn a little bit more about the key features. So let's get started. I'm very excited to introduce our panellists. We have Josh Beams, landscape photographer, Michelle Grace Hunter, amazing music photographer and early adopter of quite a lot of uh, new technology. Welcome, Michelle. Welcome. And Karen Wu, Wu Hu, we're glad you could join us. Thank you so much. Fashion and street fashion photographer, thank you for joining. Hey, Julie. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. So 2020 has been an interesting year. I know myself, I'm normally traveling all over the countryside and COVID's given me a bit of time to reconnect with some favorite pastimes um, and learn a few new things. I'd love to know from each of you how 2020 has looked for you and what you originally planned and perhaps what projects you were able to work on uh, during this crazy time. So Michelle, let's start with you. Sure. Um yeah, it's been a wild year for me because uh, this was probably one of my biggest years for touring. So um, I work, you know, in the music industry. I work exclusively with artists and musicians, both on press shots, um, album covers, and I do a lot of live music um, touring as well. So I, I work with an artist named Rule and was booked to do a bunch of touring basically from July onwards, the back end of the year, as well as a... Um, a tour in Asia in March and basically uh, it kind of all got cancelled <laughs> within like a day. Then my calendar um, definitely looked very bare and was um, very, it was very anxious there for a little while, not really knowing what to do with myself and how I was going to deal with, um, I guess, you know, a situation I hadn't been in a while actually, like just looking at a blank calendar. So um, I actually channeled all of that anxious energy into um, starting to live stream on Twitch and it's been actually really incredible and and I'm really I'm really quite grateful to have this time to not only um, learn how to live stream and, and get the skills that are involved to do that but actually build a really amazing community that always show up and you know they're always there for every stream and it's growing all of the time so you know it's like one of those silver linings things for me it's definitely definitely you know a whole it's been flipped on its head and uh, everything's been a little bit different, a little bit weird, but I've been able to build this really amazing community um, on Twitch and it's it's been very, it's been awesome, but really beneficial and uh, it's definitely kept me sane, that's for sure. Yeah, and you've actually been one of the first people, first photographers in Australia to really embrace Twitch. Quite a pioneer. Yeah, that's correct. There's only, um, I only probably know of maybe three or four photographers on Twitch um, from Australia. There's, there is a growing community on Twitch. Um, I'm on the phot photography Twitch team. So there's a bunch of people that have been there for a long time, actually, and, you know, really grinding out the, the photography streams. But uh, yeah, in terms of Australia, it, definitely an early adopter and um, really keen to show other people how they can use the platform as a learning tool and a learning uh, a place where you can learn and meet other people and discuss and yeah, it's just, an, it's another platform where, you know, young aspiring photographers can learn from people one-on-one -on -one and um, yeah, it's, it's really awesome. I can't talk highly enough about it. So, And you've been using your Z for, for live streaming and um, sharing like high quality content with your audience. Yeah, that's correct. I've been using the Z6 uh, for streaming since the start, actually, or since I learned at, that I was able to do that, <laughs> which is um, which was really early on. So yeah, that you know, it's I think great as a photography streamer to have a really high quality looking stream. Like I'm not just using a webcam. Um, I put a lot of time into what my streams look like, the overlays, the feel, all of that sort of stuff that that come along with live streaming. Um, and so when people, you know, arrive there, it's, they know that it's, you know, not only is it a photography stream, but it, you know, it's, it's high quality and the, um, the type, different workshops and stuff that we do 
uh, from an industry professional that's been working in the industry for a long time. So yeah, there's like, like I said, there's so many benefits to Twitch and um, I'm really just out there flying the flag at the moment, telling everyone to get amongst it. So I, I love it. It's really great. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, 2020 has been an interesting year, Josh. And uh, as a landscape photographer, I can imagine it's had a few challenges for you. So how's the year looked for you and what projects or what have you been doing to keep yourself occupied? Yeah, so I guess um, obviously during COVID, I saw a lot more of my house. Um, so I try to focus on uh, areas close by to home just to sort of re recapture them to build my portfolio back up with some fresher images uh, to what I've got from these local places. I'm used to traveling a lot around the world and my partner and I had, a, had plans to go to Canada and uh, through America and back to Iceland and also we wanted to go to the Kimberleys here in Australia, um, which we're going to do in the second part uh, when we had that sort of the, the relaxed res restrictions, I think it was in April, um, but just as those restrictions came in, we didn't get to do that, so shattered. Um, I was also able in that time to sort of look at my I don't know, look at my skills in certain aspects on how I take photos and um, sort of try and sharpen those and be a little bit more um, precise. Learn more about color and what color work, you know, what colors work with each other and, and just sort of look for that in the landscape. Um, also, I do a lot of weddings. Weddings is the biggest part of my, my year. So um, obviously didn't get any wedding bookings. No one's gonna book a wedding during a pandemic. Um, so, yeah, uh, real estate has been probably something that's kept me afloat. Um, you know, being a, being a professional photographer and doing it full time, uh, it it's definitely the the real estate market is booming at the moment. So it's uh, it's it's been very busy um, every day. I'm out shooting properties and real estate. So that's that's kept me kept me on my feet for sure. Fantastic. I'm glad to hear that you've been um, keeping busy and getting some work because it has been a bit of a tricky time for photographers, you know, not being able to shoot other people. So it's good that the, the housing market was still there for you. And I think there'll be a really big boom in travel in Victoria after this. It's a strange thing like starting out doing landscapes, um, you know, before I, was before I went to it full time, to think that I'm doing real estate photography. And that's been something that's kept me you know, kept food on the table basically. Um, it's not something that I've ever thought I would be doing and then you know, here I am doing it, pushed into it, um, more so because of, of you know, a pandemic and doing less landscapes. So uh, it's been good, it's been good to, to, learn, to learn a whole different, um, whole different thing. But to be able to apply landscape skills, you know, using certain elements like leading lines and you know, framing a subject and things like that um, in real estate. So it's been good to get sort of creative like that. Yeah, fantastic. And Karen, Karen Wu, fashion photography. Well, I think there's been a lot of online shopping going on, but how is the how is your year shaped up for you not being able to do um, a lot of fashion stuff in person? What have you been doing to keep yourself busy? Yeah, Julie, like it's just been such a crazy year, a year that I didn't even think um, I would have imagined. Like it's been a for me, if I was to describe 2020, it's a year of growth and year of focus. So it was a bit of a silver lining because like I've been working behind the scenes on um, building up my business, which is Starbook, which is about uh, helping female entrepreneurs. So I was able to just sit back and really focus my time in building up a community that way I can help female entrepreneurs to build their online businesses. So that was a, a side business that I was being able to work and focus on and at the same time like because of the COVID and all the messaging a lot of the brands needed to have that message out there in the market they've been able to connect with me and hire me to do their videos so it was like maybe explain the videos um, uh, to explain where they're at and how they could do things better and you know social distancing so it's been a year where I've been able to hone in a lot of my um, video and editing skills. So that's been really great, especially having a camera like the Z6. It's just allowed me to open up so many more opportunities rather than doing stills. So I found this year I've been able to focus more on my filming skills um, and being able to expand my um, portfolio to include the both. 
And also like one another interesting thing is because, you know, I'm on social media as well. People have been um, collaborating with me and doing virtual shoots. And for example, like I had a photographer in Sydney, they asked me to do a, a little mini um, shoot. So she directed me and I just, um, just sat in front of the camera and just, uh, you know, did a few modeling poses, but no, but it was really fun just to be really creative and think of new ways of um, just staying creative and not uh, kind of sit behind and just uh, feel, you know, gloomy about the whole situation and also I was going to ask you if um because I know that you've done quite a bit of modeling for yourself and I was going to ask if you turned the camera on yourself a little bit more at home and you know got a bit funky in your fashionable clothing a funny thing is like there's times where I just will do that but at, at, at the same time I just thought no I actually decided not even be on social media as much because I just really wanted to focus on what I wanted to do um, it, whether it is just reading up on the latest editing, just teaching myself or just seeing what other people are doing. I just found myself like getting inspired. I think that was the perfect time to be inspired. And if I was to do modeling, I just was itching to really work with other people. So perhaps maybe I was looking at a lot of fashion campaigns and uh, YouTube channels and documentaries to come up with ideas so yes i spent a lot of time zooming with a lot of my creative friends coming up with new briefs and just can't wait to get out there and create editorial work so i think it's just like josh was saying just being active in your and trying to think of new ways new things to, to be ready when um you know lockdown is finished so i just about keeping busy being focused on what you want to do and helping um, female entrepreneurs so I think that was my year it's a busy year yeah thanks guys it's been a fantastic year for all of you and it's really great to see you embracing new technology and new challenges and learning new things so well done so let's discuss Nikon's latest products the Z6 II and the Z7 II the Z6 II builds on the strengths of the Z mirrorless platform with more autofocus options, improved video capabilities, better low light performance, increased buffer, and a faster frame rate. Pretty much more of everything you want for both stills and video in the one camera. The Z7 II builds upon high resolution imaging capabilities of the Z system, and it offers increased dynamic range, more speed, improved workflow enhancements, pretty much everything you want for an ultra high performance camera. Now, Josh, you got to use the Z7 II. So let's start with you. And if you could tell us what your thoughts were of the Z7 II for your photography. So um, the first, the, the actual first shoot I did with it was, um, with it was an Astro shoot uh, up at the Horn at Mount Buffalo. And I was shooting, at around ISO 5000 uh, and I zoomed in on the image and to see how clean the files were standing there looking at it, um, I was excited to bring them back to see what I can actually extract from the files. Uh, and with cameras, you know, with a high megapixel count, you can it incur a lot, of, uh, a lot of noise. So I usually like to shoot Astro on like the Z6, um, less megapixels, less noise. But I was super surprised with how well it performed uh, in low light in those sort of settings in high ISO like that. Also, um, the autofocus, the eye tracker is just, I do not know how they even invented that. <laughs> um, it's so accurate. So if you wanted to do uh, like portraiture, I do weddings, so it's super handy when I'm trying to track a subject's, um, you know, focus on their face at like 2.8 and it tracks the eye and I've got that focus all the time. With the Z7 II, it, 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 didn't, it didn't lose focus, it didn't move, like, lose track of the eye. Um, that really blew me away. Also, extra, the, the battery life, being able to charge on the go with USB-C charging is just unreal. For, for someone that travels a lot, uh, it's super handy, so absolutely love it. Also, the five axis stabilization, uh, Crazy. Uh, I do a little bit of video with my with my real estate photography, and having gimbal-like stabilization inbuilt into the camera is just uh, unreal. So, first few impressions were 
great and I've only had it for five days. <laughs> so yeah, no, incredible camera. Wow, Josh, that was such a wrap for the camera. I feel like you're reading off a manual. I swear you're not reading off a manual, are you? But gee, you just pulled out like 10 of the core features. So thank you, great job. I think you should work for Nikon. <laughs> Michelle, you got the Z6 II. How have you found the camera for your music photography yes. and streaming? I, I love it. I think the first thing I noticed was, um, uh, you know, uh, adopting the mirrorless, the Z6 last year um, and using that for the last kind of, yeah, it's also almost been a year now, um, how easy that transition was. So like, it's not you know, it's not unfamiliar. It's really, it, it's very, very similar. There's not like a big learning curve or anything like that. It was just like straight in my hand and felt like, you know, felt like home, which is great. Cause I'm, I'm not really tech focused and anything that's like a big learning curve can be super prohibitive for me. So I like things that are easy to use. Um, the main thing that I noticed because I shoot, you know, a, a large volume of live music performances and I was actually in Sydney so I was able to shoot some live music performances, which was amazing. Um, that was the ISO um, capabilities. I was shooting in a really tiny venue and I was using um, two lenses, which was the 50mm 1.8 and my 24 to 70, which is an F4. And I've spoken about this so many times, but the um, what I'm able to get out of even the that 24 to 70 F4 for live music stuff has actually blown my mind. So. Um, being able to push the ISO and it not being like super noisy is like, that's like life changing. That's like for music photographers, that's, you know, such an advantage. So both that and I think like Josh was saying the the eye tracking autofocus, um, two things that I noticed straight away was was really strong and and like I said shooting in a tiny venue where there's like a small amount of people the lights not great um, so the low light capability um, is really awesome and yeah I, I've been super impressed it's been great so Karen you got the Z6 II what were your first impressions of the camera for fashion photography um first of all having an extra slot that was like wow like finally <laughs> there is an extra card slot for the camera because as we know a lot of people complained like there isn't a another extra memory card slot where we could back up your files so that was like really awesome and still kept the same shape and i thought that was really great when i pulled up the camera and started you know uh shooting like filming the model, uh, I just noticed how the IAF was just so accurate. It just didn't left the eye. And it was just, for me, being able to pinpoint the eye straight away and film continuously, that was um, really uh, amazing for me. So, because you need to be accurate, because I'm always shooting really quickly when there's a, a person or uh, something that I need to take straight away. And to be able to accurately take it in that point of time, and very quickly, um, it's it's really handy for a photographer like me. So we were talking about the low light performance of the new cameras and the AF detection range starts at minus 4.5 EV, which is pretty awesome. Josh, let's talk to your picture. Um, I'm not suggesting that you'll be leaving your tripod home at any time soon, but how's the low light performance assisting you with your work? So one thing I love to do, I love to incorporate a foreground into my images. It's just something that I really enjoy doing. Um, I do a lot of focus stacking. So good thing the Z7 II has focus shift. So I use that feature. But what I do is I, uh, I like to have it underexposed to protect the highlights. Uh, therefore the foreground is going to be black. Um, but when I'm, when I'm in a you know, fast moving scene, like a sunset's happening really quick or anything like that, I like to just sort of get my focus stack done um, and be able to worry about bringing up my foreground later um, instead of using maybe a filter to balance both out. So I'll have to rely on the low light performance um, in that aspect. And it, it, it is just incredible how much detail can be pulled out um, of those, uh, it, first of all, out of it being totally dark foreground, but also out of the shadows, out of that totally dark foreground, um, you can bring a lot of detail back in and it doesn't, does it bring in any color noise? Uh, it is just, it's so, so good. Um, it's super impressive. Every camera that you guys bring out, I just keep getting blown away by that, that low light and dynamic range um, that you can, you know, you can get from these cameras. 
and the Z7 II has that. Just curious, how many apostles are there left? To be uh, three? <laughs> There's not many. <laughs> yeah. It's a really beautiful image. So, really beautiful image. And if we go to the next picture, Michelle, this is your image. Um, and you, you mentioned before that you tested the camera out at a shoot in Sydney. You were very fortunate to be able to actually shoot something live. So uh, I imagine, you know, for, for live shoots, you know, the changing lighting and having to use some faster shutter speeds at some time. How's your experience been with the Z6 II? Yeah, so um, the, if it's the black and white um, image that you're referring to, um, uh, the, at the rooftop of the MCA, we did a show with Rule and uh, it was at dusk. So we're kind of get, getting rapidly changing light um, from, you know, it was full sun during the day. And as it was sun setting, we were just losing a lot of light. Uh, and there were a little, it was a little bit of light around, but it was definitely um, quite a low light situation. So it was really great to test out the camera uh, in that particular situation. And um, yeah, like I, again, was just like really stoked to see it wasn't having any issues uh, with focusing or, uh, you know, previously with other cameras, when it gets into those situations, it can really struggle finding the focus, focus points. And it just wasn't wasn't having that issue um, at all in that particular situation. Um, so yeah, super impressed, was, has been really great. It's got an interesting bokeh in the background of that image as well. I like how it's picked up the lights. Yeah, so that was the, um, the Harbour Bridge behind. So basically it was on the rooftop of the uh, MCA building had um, Opera House on one side and the Harbour Bridge on the other side. So uh, I was shooting, I think, nearly entirely with the 50mm 1.8, which um, is such a gorgeous lens. So, yeah, you really do notice that bokeh in, in that shot. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, really pretty. So, Michelle, tell us about the image of Etsy on the right. Uh, it's very vibrant. Yeah, so this was taken um, at a show of Essie's in Sydney, which was in a really dark and dingy um venue so really 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 low light there wasn't wasn't much available light at all and so i was really impressed i think this is where the the z62 impressed me the most was in this situation so and as a music photographer we we are often thrown in the situation where you know we're able to shoot the show it's fine there's lots of available light but if we're asked to do some backstage stuff it can be it can be really tricky so i was looking around the venue and there was just a little pocket of this bright red light in the corner, um, which also can be really tricky to work with as well. But I, I was really impressed that it had no issues struggle, um, no issues focusing. There was no struggle whatsoever. I was able to get really clean shots of her and was able to pull out really vibrant colors. So yeah, it worked really well. I was, I was stoked. Yeah, it's always a good test of a camera's ISO performance, isn't it? When it can use a high ISO and hold the color up. Yeah, absolutely. And just, and like not a lot of noise at all. So this would have been shot, I think it probably, you know, two or 3000 ISO and, and you really can't tell this. It, you're not getting that super noisy um, image that you would expect of something that high. And, uh, but mostly it was just it, the focusing in that situation. If I, if I could show you the corner, I think you would like be very, very shocked. It was very dark. So uh, yeah, I was like, I, I couldn't believe it when I got um, the files back that I actually was able to pull that much out of it. So it was really cool. It looks fantastic. To me, it almost looks painted. You know, it's like a stylist dream that her skin's orange and the background's orange. And it, you know, it looks very, very fashionist to me. So well yeah, done. Almost really. hyper real, so yeah. <laughs> so speaking of fashion, we go to Karen's picture. Karen, you had the Z6 II and you were an early adopter of our system for, I think, its size and its features. Have you noticed a difference in the low light performance and perhaps skin tone for your work in fashion? I feel like I do. I feel like uh, with the Z6, the original one, um, it was good in low light, but not as amazing as the Z6 II. I think, it, like I said, it ought to do with the accuracy of the AF in low light, that was really important to me. And what I found was impressive is like, it's, you know, it's got that square and then it's got that little um, square above it and it allows me to track accurately and properly. So I know, all right, when I'm doing the filming or the photography, like the still on the screen, it's just, it works perfectly. And you know, as a person, I always look for um, 
different situations where I can do a bit of daylight in a low light situation like in a car park or in a garage I always look for ways I can just um, um, I don't know, extend the camera to a way that it allows me to pull amazing images. So yeah, I just had the model to pull out in this concrete um, sort of car park but because I always look for things where his outfit will look really good with the um, background. So I was able to, yeah, I love the way I pulled out um, this camera in a low light situation to get this image. Yeah, it's very nicely color coordinated. So a couple of new features in the camera is the dual processor, which I'm really excited about because I feel like having two X-Speed 6 processing engines means there's more buffer capacity, more overall speed, faster image processing, but there's also room for future development. Incorporated in that is an additional frames per second. So 14 frames a second for the Z6 II and 10 frames a second for the Z7 II. Now, Karen, I'm going to talk to you about this one because you're quite an early adopter of video. You've always been dabbling a little bit of video and a bit of giffies and things like that. And I believe you put together a video that incorporated a lot of the features of the new camera, the Z6 II, with the 14 frames a second in part of the video. Could you tell us about that, please? I had so much fun putting a little video together because I really want to highlight all the features of this Z6 II. What really impressed me the most was the 14 frames per second because in the Z6, the original version, what I found was when it reached the buffer, it would black out and it would just stop and I have to kind of redo it again. But what I found with this camera, like I was able to like um, take it continuously uh, for quite a long time and it wouldn't click it wouldn't stop or black out. So I thought that is brilliant. That was a great improvement on this um, camera uh, Z6 II. And one of my favorite things was trying to test the dynamic range was really finding pockets of light and um, putting the model in situations where you've got a, a lot of sunlight, but also a bit of low light. And I wanted to see how the camera handled those, uh, those situations. And I loved how the camera will pick it up and be able to show the highlight and really um, be able to expose correctly and would, um, yeah, have the image uh, come up really beautifully. Especially when I took him down in the garage in a low light area and just like having the detail of the face shown up on the video was quite astounding. Like I really loved um, how the eyes would pop and especially the model would go, oh no, you can see all the details on my face. I'm not sure about that, but just highlights how amazing the, it just picks up on like the color tones and, and then the, the, the lines on your face. It's just amazing. And I, I really love the color and vibrancy that came out of um, the video. And like I said, like doing giffies and things, I just love the way you can be so creative with the camera and combining like frames uh, where you can do 14 frames per second, doing giffies and then doing smooth movement and able to pick up on the, the movement and doing slow motion and putting all that in. And it's just fun. Like I said, it all comes down to just being able to increase my opportunities on set to be able to do film and stills. And it allows the client to go, oh my gosh, like I want to hire you because you can do both rather than having two separate people doing the same, uh, doing, working on set. So it's been amazing having this camera. Okay. And so Michelle, you use the Z6 II in a different capacity for video with your streaming. So how have you yeah. found that? Yeah, um, like I said, I've been using the Z6, um, uh, the previous model for streaming for a little while. So I definitely wanted to, to try the, the Z6 II out as well. And, um, you know, just all of the things that I was loving about the Z6 in terms of the quality and um, the output. I think one, one thing that people definitely notice when they, they come to my stream is how high the quality is. Because a lot of people are streaming just with, you know, regular um, webcams and stuff like that. But the fact that you can just plug and play and you're just able to stream um, is, uh, is a, you know, there's a new webcam utility that makes it really, really easy. And uh, it's been such an advantage, I think, to, to be a professional photographer that's streaming and the stream is able to be, you know, to look as good as it does. So, it, it, yeah, super cool. Yeah, it's great to put your best face forward, isn't it? When you care about your still images and your video, and then so many people use these horrible little built-in webcams. And when we've got a Z6 II or Z7 II mirrorless capability, 
as a professional content creator, why wouldn't you want to put your best face forward? So, and your streaming's amazing. Josh, have you dabbled in video? Yeah, so I do a, um, I do a little bit. I do the odd wedding in video. I, like, I prefer to do for, you know, the photos and weddings, but um, uh, real estate properties, I do a heap of video in that. So, like I was saying earlier, like the, the, the stabilization, the ambulance stabilization is just gimbal-like. Um, saves me carrying around this big, you know, this big gimbal. So really really impressive um and just the the quality and color that you get out of the out of files is just it's just really really nice so yeah fantastic and there's some cool features being able to customize the command rings on on your z lenses for um, exposure or iso or aperture even so you can stop it down to black or open it up to white there's some really cool functions in the z cameras so it's great to see you guys are embracing video and I think a lot of photographers are doing that. So the Z, the Z6 II in particular for video is such a great option for people. So Michelle, you photograph people in the studio and on location. How do you set up your autofocus? Yeah, it kind of depends on um, the situation. Uh, it is kind of a little bit different for a studio setting um, and a location setting because location is often a little bit more dynamic and a little bit kind of like a, a candid situation of, often. Uh, the first example that you're showing was um, just shot in the studio yesterday actually and again like you know trying to trying to focus on the face in a low light situation again just been really impressed with how the capability of the Z6 II, it's, you know, there's been no issues with um, focusing whatsoever. I just usually set it to a point that's on the face uh, and usually just a single point and, um, you know, just, just not having any issues um, hitting that point every time. And when I'm in on location, it's, it's often a little bit more dynamic. So um, I'm a little bit like, uh, I like to set uh, my, my, the, the focus point and then kind of recompose and it's just it just sticks like glue when I do that too so if I'm uh, framing up the shot you know uh, composing for the focus point to be at the, the center of the face and then recompose and then take the photo it just it sticks and that's what I really love um, that's one of the the main things that I look for in a camera actually is to, to make sure that happens and it sticks and it's not moving all over the place and losing focus so um, these two examples are, uh, you know, really different ways of using the autofocus and, and they're, they're using, um, they're actually performing really well in both situations. And no problem with the smoke interfering with um, the focus? This, it actually can be a bit of an issue. It's a bit of a timing thing um, with the smoke. So, uh, but I must say it's much better than it has been in the past with other cameras. So. Um, in, in the past, when, when, if there was smoke anywhere near it, it would, you just wouldn't be able to get focus at all. But I found yesterday, um, using the Z6 II in the studio, I wasn't having the same issues that I would have had in the past using different cameras. So uh, it, it can be sometimes a little bit slower with smoke, but it really was hitting it. So when I pulled up this image last night, I was, I was really stoked. I was like, wow, it's, it was super sharp. I zoomed right in and it really did nail that focus, which is great. It's a beautiful, beautiful shot. It's, um, it's so ethereal, isn't it? Yeah, really stoked with it, yeah. You've got great styling and um, good creativity. Did you come up with this concept yourself or was this something that you worked with the artist about? Yeah, so this is a collaboration with this particular artist, uh, Parvin, her name is. She's um, an incredible musician that's about to release some music. So it's uh, herself, she had a costume designer and she had a friend of mine, uh, Sophia, doing styling for her. Uh, as well as um, using references, like she sends references to myself. And then on the day, we we kind of, we bring all of that together and bring it to fru fruition, I guess. So yeah, a bit of a joint effort. Um, and you know, that's the thing I love working with musicians the most is that it's really collaborative and the photos are, they really are meant to represent individual artists. So a lot of my work can look really different because it is about, it's less about me and, and my style often and, and a lot about the artist and their style and what they're trying to portray um, from a visual point of view. So Karen, with fashion photography, I could imagine that the eye autofocus helps you to concentrate more on the feel of the image or directing your subject rather than about having to worry so much about nailing the focus on the eye. Um, perhaps you can tell us your experience with the autofocus and how you work with the Z6 II autofocus. 
That is so super important for me because you know my mind is always running uh, a million miles per hour. Like you don't have time to think. You just want to quickly frame the person in the shot and then just expect the camera to do its work. And it 100% all the time when I have the AF focus, I especially with the new feature, it's just been really incredible. So, you know, just making sure the model is standing perfectly, posed really nicely, the outfit looks good, the light's hitting nicely, and all I need to do is pull up the camera and then focus and shoot. What I found most impressive, even when I was shooting this um, model just standing there, even when I was doing a Giphy and following him as I was shooting really quickly, rapidly with the 14 frames per second, um, it, it was just on point all the time. And even when I was just doing movie, um, uh, movies, uh, the video section, like pulling in and out, like even though it blurs out and then it goes in really nicely and focuses back on the eye. So to me, it's really important to be able to pull up the camera and do it in one go without having to retake all the time. So that's really amazing for me. And have you been playing around with the um, focus speed for your video in particular, like being able to adjust the speed of transition from focusing from one point to another? You mean more like um, when I'm doing a panning shot? Yeah, is that what you mean? Like when I'm panning from a foreground to background and making sure it goes onto the eye again and the actual subject, is that what you mean, Julie? Yeah, sure. I mean, that's a really great example. I mean, we have the capability of being able to speed up or slow down the transition from one point to the next whilst panning. And so I wondered if you'd had a chance to play with that for your video. Yeah, I did. Actually, good point there, because like in that shot, the same point where the model was standing, you know, when you want to do a cool transition or doing something really funky and fast, and then you can edit it into the video. So it's really fun that I can just pull up, you know, when the camera focus on the foreground and suddenly you pan the shot and it just leads into the model and it goes right onto the face and the eyes as perfect transition shot that I would love to edit into my video. So yeah, just pulling it, like I said, going back and forth, panning away from buildings or from a tree and focus. I really love that feature that the camera allows me to do. Did you find that the um, hair on the subject um, interfered with the camera's ability to lock onto the eye? That is such a good question, Julie. Um, no, it didn't interfere. And it, when I even did the stills, I went onto the uh, computer and looked and zoomed at 200% because I love to do that. With the Z7, it's like, you know, you expect that high quality. But I was pretty impressed with the Z6 to see, wow, at 200%, the eyes are still like super sharp. You can see the color. And that was really like drawn me into like, gosh, like the Z6 II has really improved. Yeah. Fantastic. So Josh, talking about high resolution images, which we'll get into a little bit more later. Let's talk about this really beautiful, almost fantastical looking landscape. Um, I look at this and expect to see a dragon fly through the sky in the background. Can you tell us, you know, how did you capture this image and your experience or the way you set up the autofocus to, to create this beautiful landscape? Yeah, so uh, one, one technique I love to use, and one actual setting in, in the, uh, the Nikon cameras is focus shift. Now focus shift, most people would know it as focus stacking. Uh, focus stacking is a technique of taking multiple images at different focal points bringing them into software, combining them all together to create an image that has full depth of field from the foreground to the background, like you can see here in this, um, in this shot from Cape Willemai. I like, to, I like to make the viewer feel like they are sitting in, the, you know, in that same position as where my camera was sitting and where I was sitting. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of scenarios, a lot of locations that have so many different elements that are so interesting. Um, and being able to have that fully focused it's just incredible. And with, with how well the focus shift works in the Nikon cameras, it just blows my mind every time. I used to have to do it manually, so I'd have to find the focus point closest to me, slowly wind it forward, take a shot, and keep doing that over and over again. Sometimes you're taking 30 photos to get that full, um, that full depth of field once you do bring it into that software and combine those images together. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it really is incredible. It's a game changer, really. Um, absolutely. It's a really interesting way of looking at a picture because I find myself 
you know, looking at it for, at, at the start, you know, at the at where the flowers are and then my eye travels to the background. And then it almost does a loop back around because our eyes aren't used to seeing the whole world in focus. That's exactly right, yep. So another technique for like, um, and a good, a good thing to, to note is when, when shooting landscapes, you wanna have, if you could split that landscape photo up into you know, six pieces, you wanna have every piece interesting. Um, and that's one thing to look for when you go to a landscape is to try and, try and make every aspect of the image its own image, you know, because um, it keeps the, the person interested and looking through it. And, you know, it's, it's a totally different experience when you're, you know, when you're flicking through Instagram and you see an image and you can sit at that for, you know, minutes. Otherwise, a lot of other images you just sort of look at because it's just one focus point and you can just flick past it. So to create a story in an image is super important. And again, using that focus shift technique um, really helps the viewer obviously see all those fine details in a scene. And especially when it gets printed large, um, in large format, it's just even more uh, incredible to be able to see that. Fabulous shot, Josh. Well done, nailed it. So Josh, we're on a roll with your images and I think we might continue with this beautiful photo of the bird eating um, the spider. The Z7 II has got a very high resolution image sensor. It's actually a backside illuminated CMOS sensor. And I can imagine for your work in particular, uh, this would be very handy. Could you tell us a little bit about the image that you've captured here? Yeah, so, um, so we were out at Mount Buffalo just over the weekend. Um, we just shot up there just to use this camera, just to get some, you know, get some, try, see, push this camera to see what, um, what it is capable of. And having, you know, that 45.7 megapixels uh, to work with was just incredible. One thing in a, in a camera, I, I, need, I need all those megapixels. I love to be able to get creative, crop in if I need to. Um, that megapixel real estate is everything. Uh, we'll, we'll out in this little uh, area, dinner plane actually, just off of Mount Hotham, and um, we found this little f uh, flame robin, flame robin, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll tracking it around all like f a lot of the afternoon. And I had the Z7 II and the 7200, um, the Z7200 2.8, which that lens is just incredible. Putting these two together, unreal. Shooting this bird, I'm just tracking it. Uh, the autofocus again incredible tracking something so small so quick and not grabbing anything else uh it was just amazing but when i brought the files home and to be able to zoom in on these images and notice a spider a crucifix spider was just amazing well, he's sure like, been crucified hasn't he yeah <laughs> i did yeah um and to, to just to see all those fine details from you know so far away and be able to crop in and and, and get that out of a out of a file and to have it so clean and the colors so crisp, it was just, it was really, really impressive. Um, speechless about how, how amazing it is. And I guess a lot, you know, particularly for birding, you're working at such large distances. So to be able to drag the file up and not lose that detail is pretty cool. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a spider that close up that big, got a big screen. But yeah, there's a lot of detail going on there. He's a pretty bird and a pretty ugly spider. So that's bird. a great example of the resolution. So Michelle, let's have a look at your images. Um, a lot of your work is online, but do you have, um, you know, is there times when you're printing out uh, either in large scale or equally to that? I imagine sometimes in live performances, you're working on a large scale with a wide angle lens. That's exactly right. And, um, you know, and possibly selling prints and um, doing stuff like, uh, you know, billboards and stuff like that. So that resolution is really important to be able to nail. So I use I, these are two examples of a live performance shots. So the things that um, that I'm interested in for the resolution is are they going to be able to be reproduced in stuff like you know, tour posters and, and things that are going to be printed out? Are we, are we going to get that quality? Um, and, and these two ex different examples were um, live performances that were done done last week. So um, yeah, I was I was super stoked, and and I wouldn't you know I'm not going to have any issues being able to see this a big big massive posters that you see that there's a, an upcoming tour. Hopefully, when people start touring again, where they're going to start be printing these out at large scale again. And um, I was super impressed with what I was seeing when I was zooming into these photos. That's for sure. 
Mm, I can't wait for the bands to start playing and things, people be able to go and see live music. It's We're long overdue, so hopefully we'll see you up the front shooting and we'll be down the back enjoying it. Yeah. So um, yeah. If, thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Josh. Um, we might move on now to uh, Dynamic Range. And Josh, you have an incredible image here. Uh, there's been quite a vast improvement in the Dynamic Range on the new Z2 series. And this image here um, is really, uh, like there's a very stark difference between the left and the right. Tell us um, how you've managed to achieve this result. Yeah, so I, I purely took this shot to test the dynamic range um, of the Z7 II. You know, we're, we're probably 20 minutes after sunset, moon's out, a couple of stars are starting to pop out. So this is handheld, um, really underexposing it. There's still some bright light on the horizon just from that sunset. Um, but I really wanted to test it, so I you know, brought them home, pulled up those shadows and blown away by the details that can be recovered. Um, the dynamic range is insane. The, it's like the fire looks like it's true black. Um, any, from any other, not any other camera, but you know, the earlier models um, in the Nikon range, it, it's, it, was, it was okay, but this is like, it's taken properly exposed, you know? Um, just, just incredible. Absolutely amazed by the dynamic range in this camera. Was this photographed at the Pinnacles as well? This was at the Pinnacles as well, yeah. Yeah, gosh, it's a beautiful location. Yeah, it's really, really incredible. And then to the left, there's actually another stack there that is just as nice. Uh, not many people shoot that, but I've got a couple of shots as well, so I'll be posting those on my socials. But um, but yeah, this this was a perfect example of you know dynamic range and push and pull. Absolutely, like that image on the right hand side, it's so dark, I would have thought that that was sand. I thought, you know, okay, I could see why you would sleep down the beach and wait for the sunrise to come up, but then when you see it exposed properly, it's rocks. I wouldn't want to sleep on that beach. <laughs> you definitely wouldn't want to sleep on this beach, no way. The waves, the swell that can come into here is just incredible, um, really powerful. Yeah, it's, it's just, just stunning. <laughs> so Karen, in contrast to Josh's images, which were shot at sunset, your images are shot what looks like in the middle of the day, bright sunshine, very contrasty light. So how have you found the dynamic range of the new Z6 II? Yeah, like this shot was shot like 12 noon and be able to find places where I could actually have like dark and light is quite difficult. But so for me to be going in the alleyway and say, like, oh great, there's a bit of a pocket of light, let's test this camera. And I was so amazed like, when I did shoot it in camera and then go back in my computer and looking through the detail, it, it really um, allowed me to pull back the shadows and see the detail of the pavement. In fact, I kind of darkened it a little because you could see so much detail. I thought, no, but I really wanted to kind of create the vignette. And it just shows me like this camera can pull up so much detail that I can actually go back and pull it down if I needed to, to create a sort of a moody look. But I just love being able to go in alleyways, go into places where I can just find different pockets of light and just to test how amazing um, the Z6 II can really show up and be able to show the contrast between the highlights, exposures and the shadows all combined in the one shot. So I thought this was a great illustration to show how that um, camera can do that. Yeah. And Michelle, um, with your music photography, I mean, you're working in crazy lighting. And as you said, like music photographers, you know, cringe at red lighting. So um, I imagine, you know, having that sort of that extra dynamic range has been quite valuable for your work also. Yeah, that's true. Um, and, and like you said, the, the changing light and just the vary between the light and the dark as well. It's like because it's often spotlight. So you get you can get blown out highlights a lot. Uh, and um, you, actually, the, the one of the previous shots is probably a really good example of that. It, you're just not getting those really big blown out highlights. You're able to, to pull back all of the detail that you need to in the photographs. Um, with that dynamic range capability. So yeah, definitely looking forward to shooting more, um, more of that with that particular camera in the future. There's, you know, it was only two little small shows, but it's uh, definitely looking forward to pushing it. That's for sure. Fantastic. So Josh, one of the key features of the new Z 
seven two series or the Z two series is the nine hundred second exposure. I believe you've had a go of this. Would you like to share your experience and tell us how you managed to get this incredible photo? Yeah, so there's one feature that I've been loving in the new Z7 II uh, and the new Z6 II is the extended shutter. Um, it's a feature that can be turned on and usually you'd have only up to 30 seconds and then you'd have bulb and time, but now you can go past 30 seconds and wind it all the way up to 900 seconds. So it means you don't have to use the shutter release cables or, remote sh or a remote shutter. Um, which is just incredible, absolutely love it. I was able to do this in camera, 900 seconds, um, ISO 100, and really get all those details back in the scene, almost like I'm shooting daytime, but also get those nice star trails as well. So um, this was actually shot at the Horn at Mount Buffalo, and the view from up there is just so nice. We had a little bit of moonlight as well, that's why the little, the little shack's been lit, in, lit up. Um, yeah, so incredible feature. I absolutely love it. And it's, it's, it's about time that we're seeing these features come into these cameras because it's one thing that I use a lot is ex extending that shutter um, and just trying to get a nice, clean, you know, nice, clean star trails, but with a nice, clean foreground as well. So yeah. love, love it's it. It's a really haunted photo. It's almost like the branches are going to get you. They're reaching out to grab yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. It kind of feels that way when you're up there. It's, um, it's this really big old tree that's just on the cliff edge. Um, and it's just really reaching into that, into that view, that landscape. And it feels really, um, it's a really haunt. It is a really haunting feeling up there um, at night. <laughs> it's lovely to see the, the balance between something that's, you know, completely static, the building, the tree branches, and then having that motion in the background. Beautiful shot, Josh, well done. So guys, what a fantastic session today. Thank you so very much for sharing your experience with the new Z6 II and Z7 II. For the audience watching, I think we should let you all know that Josh, Michelle and Karen have only had five days to test the camera. So the work that has been presented during this presentation has been done in the last five days due to ISO and lockdown in Victoria. So for all of you that are interested in following their work and seeing what they really create in the real world, now that we're allowed out, please do check out their Instagram, follow them on social to see their future work, beautiful fashion work with Karen Wu, some fantastic music photography with Michelle Grace Hunter, and Josh Beams, you're going to be doing a lot more than just real estate from now on. There'll be a lot more landscape and uh, focus stacking, I'm sure. So thank you very, very much, all of you. A fantastic session today. You're wonderful and very talented photographers. We appreciate you sharing your um, brief experience on the new Nikon Z6 II and Z7 II. We wish you all the best for the year ahead. I hope you go nuts in your freedom with your photography and really, really enjoy getting out there and I look forward to seeing what you create. Thank you so very much. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Thanks so much. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you so much.